Hello, so in this video I'm going to test out how good ChatGPT is at A-level history by asking it three different kinds of A-level history essay questions. So if you're not sure what ChatGPT is, um, here is the way that ChatGPT describes itself. So basically it's kind of a chat bot that um, scours the internet and, and can, can answer quite complex questions. Um, and it can also answer follow-up questions about an earlier question. Um, and so it's kind of AI. Um, so I thought it'd be interesting to see how good it is at A-level history and see whether it can kind of replicate um, A-level um, history essays. So here is the first question that I'm gonna ask ChatGPT. So in reference to the years 1625 to 49, how accurate is it to say that Charles I was personally responsible for his downfall? So this is a kind of causation question about the reign of Charles I. And, and the factor is, you know, was it him or was it something else? So here's chat GPT. And I'm going to put the question in and let's watch it generate a response. OK, so that's quite a nice kind of context to begin with. Um, it doesn't really give an argument, just says it's a kind of complex issue. And then paragraph one here, we've got it talking about Charles I making unpopular decisions. Paragraph two, talking about how he disregards the authority of Parliament, dissolving Parliament. And then it gives a kind of counter paragraph where it's saying actually there's issues beyond his control, economic difficulties and religious conflicts, um, religious issues different religious groups with different agendas. And then the conclusion says that Charles I undoubtedly played a significant role in his downfall. It's not entirely accurate, so he was solely responsible. Basically, there's other issues going on. Okay, so if you're an A-level history student, what do you think of that? How good do you think that is as a A-level history essay? So I'll just quickly show you this again. And hopefully you're thinking along the same lines as me that it's not a bad effort and it does give a kind of overview, but really there's nowhere near enough detail, is there? There's not enough detailed evidence and the analysis really isn't um, substantiated, just very, very brief. But it's not a bad kind of introduction to the topic if you don't know much about it. Okay, so let's have a look at question two. This is a different one, different topic. How far did the civil rights movement of 1954 to 68 achieve its goals? So I've purposely made this a little bit more vague. It's a bigger question. And really what we'd be looking for with this one is for a student to define goals. Really, you'd have to define, well, what are the goals of the civil rights movement? And then assess the extent to which the civil rights movement was uh, effective, successful, sorry, in achieving those goals. So here we go. Let's go for... Uh, question two, how far did the civil rights movement of 1954-68 achieve its goals? Okay, so not bad kind of context again. Again, it doesn't really break it down, does it? paved the way for significant social and political change. Its goals were not fully realised. So really, we need a little bit more than that. But paragraph one is talking about the successes, talking about the Civil Rights Act and Voting Rights Act. So good pieces of evidence. And then a change in attitudes, which isn't necessarily wrong, but that second paragraph is, is quite vague, isn't it? And then it's got the counter paragraph here talking about the more structural issues that weren't addressed. Um, systemic racism, police brutality, poverty, and then other forms of discrimination. Okay. So the civil rights movement achieved significant progress. Its goals were not fully realized and much work remains to be done. So, Again, I'd be really interested to see what, what A-level history students make of these answers. Um, again, it's not really detailed enough, is it? It's, it's, it gives an overview of, of some key points, but really for, for a, an essay, that's not, that's not really enough, is it? And, it, it, you know, particularly this idea of raised, raised awareness of injustice and inequality, 
we need some kind of concrete evidence there for that. And it says it does it didn't uh didn't really fully fully get over these underlying kind of structural issues. Perhaps it could have given some examples, perhaps Martin Luther King's time in Chicago could have been could have been an example there, perhaps. Um so so probably less less good that one actually than the first one and Charles I. Okay, last question is this one. So how far can the 1884 representation of the People Act be considered the most significant turning point in British democracy in the years 1828 to 1928? So I've given it a really broad question, 100 years, and this is a turning point question. So we'd be looking to define what we mean by turning point and then assess the 1884 representation of the People Act against other turning points and then weigh it up. So we really need some good criteria of what a turning point looks like in this question. So here we go. This is the third and final question for ChatGPT. So that's the question there. It's taking its time with this one. Okay, extended the right to vote to a significant portion of the male population marks a significant turning point in the expansion of democracy in the UK. Interesting that it's kind of challenging this. It's saying it's not necessarily accurate to describe it as the most significant turning point as other events had sig significant impact on the development of democracy during this period. But it doesn't say which would be. It doesn't kind of give, you You know, you would expect really somebody to come up with, well, it wasn't this one, it was another one. So paragraph one, so it's not starting with the with the one in the question, um, which I would always recommend doing. So it, it starts with talking about 1832, and it also talks about 1918. Um talks about the emergence of new social and economic groups, chartism and the suffragettes, okay. I think this might be the conclusion. I'm just I'm just watching it develop its its conclusion here, process of dem democratic development. Right. So I think that's it for for that question. I think I think that that's hmm, is it better than the civil rights? And you let me know in the comments. What do you think? So the representation of the People Act, the most significant turning point. It didn't really talk about the representation of the People Act, did it? No. So that's really not a great. That's not a great answer, is it? I mean. In terms of giving us a, an overview and some idea of what's going on, it's not bad. But again, the level of detail, and it doesn't really break down what we mean by a turning point. Um, so in terms of a summary of ChatGPT, how good is ChatGPT at A-level history? You know, what I think is it's it's useful to provide overviews and perhaps start a discussion. You know, if you look at the, the answers that, that have been generated there, could be a really good start to a discussion like i was saying what is it leaving out why isn't it a top level answer um and it as i said it could be a useful way to gain an introductory summary on a, on an issue or a question almost similar to wikipedia but obviously more specific so i've heard it described as a kind of research assistant that you can put a question and kind of find out about it you can actually answer uh, sorry ask follow up questions as well so if there's a precise detail that it uses or or something it doesn't say you can follow up a question and kind of delve more deeply into it but i think the analysis of a level history is difficult to replicate and it just doesn't do anywhere near enough analysis it's it's very very concise and a level students just know more detail by the end of your a level you should be using much more detail than than what chat gpt is giving you there the other issue, and this is this is something that I've thought about, is where is it getting the information from? Um, you know, we don't know what it's using, what it's selecting, and what it's prioritizing. So there is an issue of provenance. You know, it, it might be arguing something that, that actually 
certain academics disagree with um, or perhaps the historiography is, has moved on from. I don't know how up to date it is, for example, on you know looking at different historical arguments or texts. So there is that issue of provenance, which makes me slightly wary of it. But I do think it could be a useful introduction to a topic. I think it's safe to say that um, A-level history students are, are still going to be producing better answers than chat GPT. I don't think chat GPT is going to be able to replicate the level of detail you need in A-level history. So I hope that was um, an interesting video. I thought it was, it was interesting to do that. Um, and it's a bit of fun. So something you can maybe play around with, but definitely... Um, you know, be confident in your own ability. You don't need to rely on chat GPT to write your uh, A-level history essays.